And we are back with optometrist Kimberly Orr from Triad Eye Associates. She's answering your questions and here's a few of your questions right now. The first one is what causes you to see floating spots? So those are just wonderfully named floaters um, and they're basically from the substance that fills up the eye. It's called the vitreous. It's made up of collagen and for everybody over time it starts to change in structure. It liquefies um, and the collagen fibers clump on each other and cast little shadows on the retina that you see as the black spots in your vision. All right. And is there anything we can do about them? Do we need to worry about them? Most of the time you don't need to worry about them, um, but oftentimes if we have patients called with new floaters, we come in and have a look to make sure that there's not a retinal tear detachment. So you always want to get them checked out, but if it's the same old floaters you've been seeing for a long time, they're just kind of benign nuisances. I have one in my left eye that pops up every now and again. So they're, they're very common, very normal, but especially if you have flashes of light or parts of your vision missing, then you would want to go see your provider right away. Okay, good to know. All right, uh, somebody's asking about magnetic eyelashes and if they're safe to wear. Yeah, and, and that can be a safe option for sure. Um, kind of similar to what we talked about before, if anybody's sensitive to any materials that are, are used in it, then they may have some reactions to things like allergic reactions, um, but they can be safe. Okay, this next question says, I finished chemo the end of this past February and I have no eyelashes, so what would you recommend? Yeah, so kind of like what we were talking about before, that they do make lash growth serums that are out there. Um, they're, the ones that contain the prostaglandin analogs do work a little bit better. One of them is commonly known as Latisse, and that's a prescription. Uh, they basically took advantage of a glaucoma drop and a side effect of the glaucoma drop that makes the lashes longer, but it can um, darken skin pigment. It can cause us to lose the um, fat around our eyes. The eyes look a little bit more sunken in over time. So they work really well, but they come with some other side effects. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, one of those would be uh, like lash boost and things like that. Um, squirrel lash is another one. So they, they work a little bit better, but they have some other side effects with them. Again, 2020 Beauty is a brand that has, um, does not not quite as effective, but it does help the lashes grow. Okay, gotcha. All right, let's take a few uh, questions when it comes to sunglasses, because today you definitely needed the sunglasses. Do you have to spend money for, you know, major like name brand sunglasses for them to have the right protection? You don't have to spend a lot of money for them to have the right protection. You just want to make sure that you're looking for um, like 100% UVA and UVB protection or UV 400. As long as it's having that 100% UVA and UVB protection, then you should have um, a, a safe pair. Obviously better quality lenses might not have as much warpage that could induce a prescription that you didn't want and just less likely to scratch or break. So there can be some better quality with a higher price tag, but you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money to get the protection. You just need to have that that uh, little sticker that's on there and you want to look mm -hmm. for 100% UVA and UVB. Yes. Okay. Uh, this person's asking, do polarized sunglasses prevent cataracts? I wouldn't directly put those two together, but polarization does help a lot with glare um, and more sun exposure can um, cause cataracts to develop more quickly. So I always recommend patients having UV protection uh, to help slow down the growth of cataracts, but we're all gonna get cataracts eventually. That's just kind of uh, part of the process of, of being on earth and living longer, but um, wearing sun protection can certainly help slow down that process. All right, and because that is like an inevitable thing, at what age usually are we looking at cataract and cataract surgery? So I, cataracts probably start to develop in, you know, early to mid 60s um, on, on average. And then a lot of people kind of around their 70s are starting to look at cataract surgery. And sometimes it is covered by insurance if it's at a specific like monitored part, correct? Yeah, so the insurance wants your vision to be 2040 or worse or for glare to significantly reduce the vision. So if those criteria are met, then medical insurance would cover it uh, for the surgery. Gotcha. And that is something that they do one eye first and then they do the other or do they do both at one time? 
they do, they usually separate it by about a week or two, but they do one eye at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's something that we're all just going to have to go through probably at some point in time. All right, we've got more questions um, and we're taking more of your questions. We've got one last segment, 336-379-5775.